Hey guys, just a quick screencast for a little bit of a change here. I just want to point out something for people new to web development and web design. One of the things that you see out there a lot of times is that you're going to be seduced by the brand new frameworks or the brand new technology that comes out, whether it be web development or web design, whether it be programming, whatever. And one of the things you have to always be mindful of is how useful this technology is in the real world, meaning what kind of support there is for a particular technology. Because a lot of times new tech comes out and it's cool new tech, but in the real world, there may be a lot of limitations. So for example, the easiest example I, example I can cite is in the web technology, you have all kinds of new stuff coming out in CSS or in HTML5 or in JavaScript. And they're great things, but they're not supported in a lot of the browsers people are using. So when I say they're not supported, it just simply means that the browsers that people are using don't understand some of these new technologies, some of this new code. So how do you determine whether or not a new tech or some new code is acceptable? Well, in the web stack, you can go to a site called caniuse.com, and here it is. And then you can just throw in right up here what it is you wanna search for. So for example, there's two new texts in CSS, something called Flexbox, and this is it right here. And there's something else called Grid. Now, Grid and Flexbox are very significant technologies because they simplify the whole process of creating layouts in CSS. And that's very cool. So what's the significance of these two technologies? Well, first of all, old style float-based layout it's still something you have to learn. That's why I still teach it because so many sites still utilize it and it works. And actually, once you know it, there's just three basic things you got to know. It's not that difficult once you know it. But in all honesty, CSS Grid and Flexbox makes it much easier in many respects. So the question is, do you want to use Grid in Flexbox now? Well, you go to caniuse.com and you type in can I use Grid? And what it does here, it shows you how well a particular technology is supported. So we know about Chrome 49, it tells you not supported by default, but can be enabled, blah, 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 March 2016. So you can see what browsers support what. Now, what you have to do is then check to see, let's say you're working for an established client who has a website, you gotta look into their website, see what browsers their users are using. You might find a lot of their, a lot of their people are using IE10, you don't know. It depends on the nature of the website. And so you have to check that before you jump in to use one of these cool new technologies because you don't want to build something cool with CSS Grid as an example. And then you find that 5 or 10% of the web browsers that people use, it doesn't work. So this is related to the latest version of Bootstrap. Now, Bootstrap has version 4.0. This is it here. And it says right here, Bootstrap 4 is built with Flexbox. So there's a dependency here. And I'm not sure how backward compatible it is, but there's also Bootstrap 3 as well. So that's another version of Bootstrap, which uses older techniques. You know that Bootstrap 3 is totally different, uses older techniques behind the scenes, but you know that it's going to be 100% compatible with all browsers. Now in 2018, May, I'm recording this, it is uh, unsure whether or not you can use three or four. I would still be leaning towards three now because it could be that 5%, 10% of your audience, there may be problems if you have a, a layout using Bootstrap 4. The larger issue though, that I wanna to get to, is that with CSS Grid and uh, Flexbox, all of a sudden, the need for Bootstrap diminishes quite a bit in my humble opinion because it really makes layout quite easy. So again, one of the jobs of a web developer and designer is to look at the potential audience and to decide whether or not you want to use more cutting edge technologies like Flexbox and Grid, like Bootstrap 4, or maybe you want to just stick to Bootstrap 3 and or maybe using a traditional CSS layout using floats and so forth. It depends on the project. If it's a brand new project where you don't have statistics, you can go to websites that will sh 
give you the latest statistics in terms of what browsers are being used. Now you can go to the W3 schools and there's different sites, but when you go to tech sites or sites that developers go to, of course, you're going to get a much higher percentage of high-end browsers. So you're going to have to look around, right, because nerds are going to be using high-end browsers. So you're going to have to look around at different sources to see what web browsers people are using. But another thing you can do is just think about the demo graphics. If you're building a website that's going to be targeting baby boomers, older people, much greater probability that they're going to be using older web browsers, right? So a lot of people are probably still using Windows XP. So let's see. Let's check that out. So a huge number of PCs still use ancient Windows software that puts them at risk. So this is just last year, actually, just literally a year ago. So let's see. Windows XP, 7%. Windows 8.1, 9%. You got like 14% of the world. Millions of PCs still run. So what does this tell you? That tells you that these people are going to be using IE. So that means that 14% of the world, at least, are going to be using a version of Windows that will not be able to have IE 11. I think that Windows XP does not support IE 11. I have to check that. But it won't support the latest Microsoft browser. So there you go. You got at least 14% of the world who will not be able to view Bootstrap 4 unless Bootstrap 4 has some fallbacks. And it will not be able to use CSS Grid. You will not be able to use CSS Grid or Flexbox if that is the case. Again, it's a bit of research. I would be reluctant to jump into this new stuff yet. Why? Because Bootstrap 3 still works really well. And you know it's going to work with all these guys here. All these millions of PCs. So you may be a developer saying, eh, who cares about these people? Well, if you're a business owner, do you want to lose 15% of your potential client base? I don't think so. 